Hi there, I'm Jamie Good, the Digital Fluency Coach. I'd like to take a look at microlearning with you. It has become a trendy buzzword lately in the learning and development space, but it has been around for a while. And with a few seconds here and a couple of minutes there, you can help others learn. And you can learn as well in those minutes in between making dinner and changing the diapers. Microlearning can really help people grow and develop. Here's an example. There you see in about eight seconds or less, this GIF helps someone learn how to pin tabs in Chrome. A little digital fluency skill that someone can pick up in about eight seconds by watching this GIF that can be posted to Twitter, LinkedIn, or Facebook. I'm showing you this before we dig into what microlearning means, just so it opens your mind to the possibilities of what microlearning can do for people in your organization, in your life. Microlearning comes to you in very small chunks. It lasts for a very short amount of time and you grab it when it's needed. For example, you need to install your dishwasher. What do you do? You pop over to YouTube, you watch a video on how it's done and you do it. You grab that learning when it's needed. And a microlearning needs to be like this as well. Now think about this. This cue card or recipe card, depending on what your view is of this image is something that you might want to grab and keep in your pocket when you're designing learning opportunities for people. This is about the average size of a smartphone screen these days and if you're designing micro learning for people I believe you need to think about the size of the screen that that learning is going to show up on and therefore I think that will guide you a bit better and how you're going to design the learning opportunities for people. How is it going to look on this small screen that they have in the palm of their hand? Because as we know, most people are doing things on their mobile devices these days. So maybe that's something you want to do. Put up a cue card up in your cubicle or on your desk in your pocket to remind yourself that this is approximately the size you will be designing for when you do micro learning opportunities. Now, back to that chunks thing that I talked about. Make sure you think about the content and how it can be separated into manageable, digestible chunks for the people that you are learning and training. You don't want to be taking, for example, a video and chunking it up into 50, 30 second videos because someone will look at the list of 50 videos and, be feel, and feel overwhelmed with all they need to watch and maybe not watch any of them or get to video 15 and think, oh my goodness, I can't keep clicking anymore. So think about the content and what makes sense in terms of how you split it up into chunks. Could some of the chunks be two minute videos, some of them images, and some of them short paragraphs that you have written out in text form. Be creative, but make sure it makes sense for the content that you are trying to share and train. Now here's an example of something that Google does. They put a lesson of the week on a piece of paper and stick it to the back of a door in a bathroom <laughs> bathroom stall in the washrooms at Google. Sounds a bit odd, but totally makes sense as a micro learning opportunity. This example is in encouraging your staff to show your work. For example, tell someone about the problems you face. Demo a new skill you have learned to your colleagues over lunch. Ask if anyone else is already working on something that you're working on. Share your light bulb moment in the next meeting you go to. Upload pics of the before and after of something you learned on Yammer. Showing your work, of course, in an organization can really be more efficient and help create a social learning environment where people learn from each other and don't repeat things, for example, that someone else has already worked on. But putting this on a piece of paper, simple like this, up on the back of a bathroom door stall is a micro learning moment for people in your organization. Might sound a bit funny, but you can see, I'm sure, how it would work. Here's an example of a micro learning image that I shared on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Master your calendar. Block out chunks of work time in your calendar that show you as unavailable so that you don't have people sabotaging your productivity with a bunch of meeting requests. Very simple, 
takes about five seconds to read, but it triggers some thinking in people about their productivity and how they're managing their calendar. So a little piece of a microlearning opportunity that is in an image form that can be shared on any social media site. Now, do we push or do we pull? That is a question and that is being debated a lot around microlearning. Are we pushing content out to people or are we creating it and they pull it to their device and to themselves when it's needed? Something for you to consider when you're designing the microlearning opportunities. Because really, we can't force learning on people. They will grab it when they need it. So think about the pull maybe more than the push. Now, what's happening here? Someone's catching up on their network, maybe on Twitter, maybe on Facebook, maybe on LinkedIn, while waiting for Uber. You see, microlearning can happen anytime, anywhere these days. And so this is the way people learn. Why don't we design to the way people learn instead of trying to design a way that they, we think they should learn? How about using YouTube? You know that expression, why reinvent the wheel? There's so much out there right now on YouTube. Maybe one of the things you could do for people in your organization to help them learn about leadership, for example, is just create a playlist on YouTube of really great leadership videos. For example, from TED, TED events, from great speakers that speak about leadership and have keynotes, uh, speaker speeches out on YouTube. Create a playlist of these videos and just make that available to the people in your organization. The videos are already out there. All you need to do is curate them into a playlist and people can play them at any time when they want to access them on any device. Great way to use some micro learning opportunities for people. Now, marketing. As a learning and development professional, you maybe don't think of yourself as a marketer, but marketing skills are something I believe we need to continually work on and have in our skill set. Why? As I've said, most people are going to pull the learning into their device and their experience when they need it. And so what you need to do as a learning and development professional as B, is become good at the marketing of telling your people where they can find these learning opportunities, where they can find the micro learning that you've created and how they can use it and where it's available, etc. You need to make sure they know where they can access when they need it. Sounds simple but not maybe necessarily. So think about that in terms of marketing. Are you going to tweet it out? Will you email it to people? Will you make it available on SharePoint? Will you talk about it in meetings? Make sure that you're always marketing these learning opportunities to your people. Now, to recap, when are we going to do micro learning? Very short amounts of time, when people need them, in between the dinner and diapers as I've said, Size, small chunks, where most of the time now people are on mobile, so make sure whatever you design works on any mobile device and think about that recipe card size of the screen. Are you going to push it out to people or are they going to pull it into their daily routine when they need it? And what's your job? It is to market it. Market it well to everybody so they know where it is, when it's available, and what is available. Now, one thing that we have done for years and years in learning and development is we've had this expression where we say, tell me, show me, and then let me. These days, people are skipping right to the let me stage. I want to do this. I want to be able to learn and do this right away. I need it as a skill in my job, etc. So, Think about that as well when you're designing the microlearning, let me. And I'd like to let you now think about and consider microlearning for something in your organization. What is a learning challenge that you are facing right now? What is something that you need people to learn or you need to be training and that you could do in a microlearning form, either in short videos, images, GIFs, YouTube playlists, etc. I want you to sit down now for a few minutes and think about what you could do in a learning situation you have right now that could be micro learning. And then let me know what your solution is and let's share them with each other. Let's show our work. You can do that by tweeting me your solutions at jgooddfc or emailing me jamie at digitalfluencycoach.com. Visit my website too at digitalfluencycoach.com slash bizcard 
And there you can see more microlearning examples that I have put up there for you to see as examples. Thank you for watching this video and have fun with the microlearning. I look forward to seeing the solutions you come up with and the microlearning that you're going to share. Cheers.